We got you. He's back. He's back. That's right. The Brit is back. One and all, welcome back to the Age of Empires for action. We've not seen much of Recon recently. I don't know what's been going on with my tricky trash panda, but someone's been keeping him busy. But finally, he is back on the grind, back on the ladder, and in tippity top matchup straight away because he's going up against David Kim, which, of course, is Puppy Paul, uh, the highest ranking, the, the most talented right now Canadian player, actually, ranking second in the most recent STA tournament. Had to check this out. Japanese in the hands of Recon. It's not like someone I've seen them do for a while. On the other hand, Puppy Poor is... What the f... <laughs> Wait, is this the Vortex build? Oh, dude, I have not seen that build in a long, long time. Uh, so the Vortex build, for those that are unfamiliar with it, Vortex came up this really smart build where you would stagger your farms around the edge. But I, actually, I don't think he's done that, right? Like, by the looks of it, Puppy Poor hasn't done that. The, the Vortex build was where you had um, half a tile overlap beyond the TC, and then you stagger the farms in. I think you can do something similar here still, but it's not going to be as pretty. Um, but th I thought this would be interesting because Puppy Paul has been doing some very creative builds with the English. Shit. By very creative, I mean they always revolve around <laughs> the one same thing, which is Abbey of Kings. But there's a lot of branching elements to this that Wham and him have been exploring, whether it be 2TC in Feudal, um, Fast Castle, Full Night Spam in Castle, Rush to Imperial. There's a lot of diverse builds coming out of these Abbey of Kings. And I thought it would be curious to watch how they want to address this matchup because I think actually the Japanese, they deal with the English quite well. All they really have to do is secure their gold with one or two outposts and this early night play, the king that comes out for free, doesn't really do anything. So I'm imagining that's where Recon wants to go. Recon hasn't been playing as many games as other players at the moment, so I imagine he's still just going for your standard kind of fast castle Japanese approach uh, that most players were doing back when Recon was grinding a bit more frequently. A lot of wood being gathered this early on does suggest that's where we're going to be heading. Uh, Forge is going to be on the way on a delay. It's interesting he went for the Lumber Camp first. Didn't want to go for the Straggler Trees. That's very intriguing. So th there is a possibility that in Recon's mind, this is more optimal than doing Straggler Trees for double outposts. The alternative is that we're going to be seeing Yumi. And I think that's what we're leaning towards. Like when I see someone opening Lumber Camp like this, it screams like it has to be Yumi. It's going to be a lot of wood they're holding on to, though, realistically. I'm, I'm really hoping it's not Yumi, because the, if it is, Recon's misinformed. This would work in the old Council Hall builds. I think, actually, Yumi counter Council Hall Longbow Spam, hard. But this isn't that build, remember. We've seen a complete 180 in the direction that the English go now. It's not about the slow-moving, hard-hitting boys. It's about the rapid, or the fast-moving, the king himself. Three villagers working on it. Abbey of Kings coming in. Scout-wise, how are we looking? Okay, so we've got a pretty good haul here. 15 sheep for Puppy Paw. Uh, 14 on the other side for Recon. Recon, by the way, ah, oh, sorry. I'm an idiot. I'm blind. I'm going to blame that on blue on water maps. <laughs> this makes a lot more sense for the wood now. He actually went into the pond. I, you can tell how rarely anyone does this on Rocky River by the fact that I didn't even for a second think he'd do it. This play fell off really hard, folks, because they nerfed the ponds to half their capacity. You used to get four fishing per pond. Now it's only two. Um, Japanese is one of very few sieves that can still justify doing these ponds because it's fairly cost efficient, right? You spend 150 wood sure on the dock, but then it's only a measly 45 wood per fishing boat afterwards. And this game is not live. This game was played about 12 to 18 hours ago, I think it was. So... Close to live. Kurostras now coming in on the other side of this. Recon. I'm wondering, like, how does he really want to approach this? Because he hasn't left any sort of defense at home. The other reason, by the way, why I think that you can actually still play docks on Rocky River is you do get this added benefit, right, of the archer ships, which isn't too bad. I think some of this really nice to the Japanese as well. If you, like, double dock this area, you have an archer ship in each pond. Look at all the food you secure. And that's not just any food. That's not normie food. That's Japanese's wet dream, apparently, because for some reason, this sieve thrives off of berries. I don't really know what the law logic is. Like, were the Japanese really big on berries historically? Because I've never heard of that. You'd think, you'd think it'd be like something to do with fishing, right? Like, maybe shoreline fishing is quicker for them. 
pretty sure that, like, wasn't there a, a reason behind this from AoE 3? Because I remember the Japanese was in that game as well. Anyway, walls are going up. Looks like he does know what he's up against now. Outpost also set up on the Ford. But that's the fully condensed base now for the Japanese. So Recon, fairly safe in here. On the other side of it, the King is on his way, though. This is a free unit. It heals over time. There's no reason to sit back, even when you see these walls going up. Because there's still idle time to be achieved. And it's got to be said, Recon made a boo-boo. A big whoopsie here. He didn't get this outpost up sooner. And he also put it on the Ford when he doesn't actually have that much movement speed, right? It's only the Tawara. So you can actually see there's a lot of out of time being achieved here, and it takes a long time to even get in those defenses. So Papapool has got to pull away. Behind this, he's going for that second TC build. And wait. What? Okay, no. There's no way this is free TC, guys. Chill. There's no free TC. This is simply him giving himself the boar pull. He can even shove the deer back in with the scout here. So yeah, the boar is just in range of the TC. And this bridges his base nicely. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we get something ultra greedy, like a free TC game actually out of Puppy Pool. We'd love to see the King's Palace in the middle of this base. Depends on the approach Recon wants to take, because, you know, right now he is just being greedy as well. But the problem of being too greedy when you see the Japanese are playing greed is that it very quickly turns on you. All right, this. This is uh, how to put. It. This is the entitled sieve. The the person at school. You know when like you, you were at school and there was that kid that had the really cool backpack or he had the latest video game. And you're like, mom, dad, why can't I get that as well? And they're like, you have to choose, son. You can either have your video game, or you can have your new football. Whoa. Meanwhile, the Japanese kid is kind of spoiled here. He gets the cool football. He gets the video game. He even gets the VR to go with it because this fast castle timing that you go for the Japanese doesn't leave you weak. It actually makes you stronger. The surge point you get from the Urichiro to spam out units is absurd on this sieve. Up pull. In the meantime, just trying to find some value for the king. Proving a little bit annoying, but ultimately, like, this is only going to achieve very minute idle time because you can never truly stop them in the skiff of the dock. Behind this, we are now talking about 2TC. Um, Recon is going to be eclipsed fairly quickly by this. But the whole idea is by going for the fast castle, you now play into relics. One issue is your timing is going to be slightly delayed by this king. Um, I actually think mounted samurai is the wrong way to go to deal with the king because the mounted samurai won't be able to hunt, hunt, hunt and kill. I highly rate the idea of going for Onomusha. I'm just not expecting it here considering that you are up against the English and Lombo is still a possibility. But like realistically, if Puppetpool's goal is to get to Castle Age as quickly and cleanly as possible, He's not going to be going for Lombos. He's going to be going for Knights, or he's going to be going for Men at Arms. Likely Knights here, because playing Men at Arms into Samurai is a losing fight. Remember, Dachi Tech just gives them too much bonus damage. But the whole idea of actually going into Onomusha to me gives you great map control, gives you raid potential, and the Kaburiya Tech ensures that you can always chase down the king. Puppy four. If it is Onomusha, maybe he's able to more freely do King's Pass. Like that, that's the interesting pivot here. If it's Mounted Samurai, you're going to have to drop the White Tower to be safe. Uh, one issue that White Tower dropped, by the way, if you drop it here, your backline farms are not protected. So really needs to rush up a wall on the left side here. And I'd even like to see a short one here just to guarantee that your base is secure. Same on the right. I think you just have to take a similar approach to Recon and show the same level of respect. Because if this is going to be either a Stables or an Archer range, it's going to be Mobile Cav. And that will shut you down in an instant. And yeah, he is going to go for the standard. So we're not getting any Kaburiya. A little bit disappointed by that. I genuinely think that Onomusha is still being slept on pretty hard. Um, the paranoia in Recon might be that if he goes for the Kaburiya Onomusha, doesn't matter. He's going to run into Lombo. He's going to die. We can see there's no reason to worry about that. Realistically, he should have a, a sense that there's no need to worry about that. But he's scared to come out with the scout. So he doesn't have confirmation that there's no other units behind us. White Tower, however, is going to be on the way exactly where we expected. Now, the reason why I was saying that you might want to drop the White Tower back here, or usually you want to, is the White Tower has the most value when it's dropped on your farm area. It protects that investment very cleanly. This is an area where you can set up some farms, admittedly. You can get one cluster over here, one cluster over here, and then eventually when the gold's gone, another one here. Um, but the Abbey of Kings is kind of a blocker in some ways, right? It doesn't allow you to use this space optimally. The great Japanese wooden fortress. Man, could you imagine if this Civ actually got a wood buff? Finally, Yumi would be viable. <laughs> Yoshiro is going to be dropped in. 
Oh. Oh, okay. I think that was intentional. To pull out to the other side, maybe? The ring of the bell had me a little bit worried. It's like, don't ring the town bell. Don't be that guy, Recon. You're not 10 years old. This is not Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Actually, I think Age of Empires 2 was what? 2002, right? So Recon would have been... Eight? No, I think Recon... Is he? I can't remember if he said he's the same age. I think he's two years younger than me. So he would have been seven or eight, I think. All right, so Tech Up's out on each side. And it is going to be the standard Night Spam play. We've been seeing a lot out of our people. Men at Arms added in as well. Yeah, look, look, this is, once again, my thought process on a as a follow-up. Like, if you didn't want to open with it, sure, I understand that. You're against Knights. It can be a bit spooky, even though Kubota Yar makes it easy. Now you need to be following up Onomusha. I think it's critical that you do this. He's even got the Uma Bannerman coming. This should guarantee an Onomusha follow-up. Anything else feels like a critical blunder. Recon. Now arriving with those Mountain Samurai. Give him confirmation to Puppy Paul what he's up against. I'm wondering, is Puppy Paul just going to go for the Spearman? Because the reason why you want to go Spearman here is it's very difficult to fight into Mounted Samurai due to the fact that the deflective armor gives them an edge, right? It takes away that initial hit that you get as Knights. However, what is very interesting in this matchup by adding in just a king is the heal aura. It actually forces the Japanese player to have to commit and kill. The problem with that is if they start running away, you can't commit and kill, which is why I want to see the Onimusha. Onimusha forced their hand. They guaranteed you can get those, those snipe outs, right? It's kind of like having your own little mobile Jean d'Arc at the end of a, a night clash. You're like, oh, that one's low. Snipe. like the fishing is done with. Recon. Second Yorishiro coming out. My friend, uh, I don't like this. I really, really don't like this. He's going for the forge play. So th this is very costly to your map control. And Puppy Paul, by the way, is also playing Relics now. Now, once again, the, the reality is actually if Puppy Paul wants, he can easily contest these knights. These mounted samurai will never be able to get the final hit, and that's a problem because all Puppy Paul needs to do is run around healing his knights or pull very injured ones back towards the Abbey of Kings to heal for full. And yeah, I knew the moment I mentioned Onomusha, Fei was going to appear in chat. This is exactly my worry. Like, th this build is so good when you add in Onomusha. I think what Recon has done is he's mistook the situation for, oh, my knights are actually better because of deflective armor and melee tech. So I can just spam knights as well. And as long as I don't fight underneath the attack speed aura, I'll win. That's not true. The king changes the entire dynamic. Look, you're going for this charge. He could easily pull away. And if he pulls away, that heal's going to start ticking in. And yeah, the spearman also arriving scares the crap out of recon. Oh, you could easily hold this hostage with the pullback with the, uh, the wall low. So recon is going to get the majority of the relics at least. Oh, nice snipe coming in. Does actually reach in and find the tag. Spearmen are not being targeted down straight away, though, so that's a lot of bonus damage coming through. This Knight Exchange, although the numbers are with Recon for the moment, the reinforcements have me a little bit worried. I feel like Recon actually needs to win this fight a lot more than Puppy Boy does. King is at least going to go down, but a lot of losses on each side. And behind this, remember, there's an eco difference now of 20. A more or less drawn-out fight isn't good enough for Recon. He needs an absolute win, and I don't feel like that was an absolute win. Especially when you consider behind this, you know, some relics are still being pulled back. He at least sniped the monk on the right side here. But you're talking about a game now where, like, yeah, this relic should be a little bit difficult to reach in time. There should be a second strike. And the relic in the back corner on the left doesn't really seem grabbable here. I'm wondering what Recon's win condition is in his mind. There's no way you want to be going Imperial Age in this matchup, right? We've been seeing what Wingard Raiders can do. Then again, I think Recon's perspective might be that actually Imperial is good for him. Because, as I said, I don't think he's been playing as many games recently. So he might not be aware of just how potent this Wingard Raider spam build is. I would favor English in this matchup now in Imperial because of the surge point. For Japan, I think it's all about massing and castle and going. But when you only play Mounted Samurai, it's very difficult to mass. Looks like we're finally getting these Archer Rangers, but... Just imagine if he had them the fight before. It wouldn't have even been close. Oh, that's alright. I'm just going to march around the back. This is what it's highlighting, right? This is why you typically build your farm clusters 
around the White Tower because this happens. Even when the wall's up, this still happens, right? So kind of an awkward issue now that he has to solve for. He has at least got a decent number of spearmen coming out. So this Mount Samurai Raid shouldn't do too much damage. Maybe three or four villages. So it's still going to be a 20 plus lead for the English. Another thing to keep in mind is that this stage in the game, it's only a Daimyo level one. That's a 25% increase gathering rate on farms. Would you like to guess how much the English get at this stage in the game? You'd be correct if you say exactly the same. However, it's much worse than that. Because they're going to be getting the Ecotechs as well. Level 2 Ecotech is on the way. So right now, the English food eco is superior. Far superior to the Japanese. And oh, wait, what? Oh god, it's not even Onomusha. He's just adding it for Yumi, isn't he? For the Spears. Okay, with this being the thing you're worried about, I feel like I'd actually rather see you go uh, Onam Bugisha here. Onam Bugisha plus Mount Samurai would be really effective. You tank with a Mount Samurai, the Onam Bugisha go in and kill. And sure, you know the Knights will be good against Onam Bugisha, but that's not your goal, right? I I feel like the Onam Bugisha also would do better against Knights than you would do against Knights, right? Like, your damage is irrelevant on this unit at this stage against this comp. It's good against the Spears for sure, but like if you actually think about the attack speed, 1.62 seconds versus an Ono Bagisha, which has under one attack a second, right? So, I said that the wrong way around. Uh, 0.9 attacks every second, which means they will actually put out more damage than Yumi are ever capable of. And sure, you are paying a little bit more. It's more expensive on the food, but you're the Japanese. Food should not be your limitation. If you're focusing on expanding these farms, that should be easily maintainable. It looks like we are at least getting the Onomusha now. So I'm glad of that. I, I think like the Onomusha are the thing that we're missing here. The problem is you've waited so long now that Puppy Paw is actually adding in longbows. And that was my worry. Is like this initial play by Puppy Paw being 2 TC, spamming knights. Very expensive with food, right? Can't really afford to stick the people on wood. But now that he's starting to flesh out, it becomes feasible. On top of that, guys, we're targeting Imperial Age. <laughs> it's the same build that we keep seeing Puppy Paw do. Recon might as well name this build order. I don't know what to do here. Like, it just feels like he's trying to get a little bit of everything to cover his bases. Flash is going to come in behind this puppy pool. A lot of food coming through. Knights are going to clash reasonably well. The Onomusha should make it a good exchange for the Japanese, though. So, puppy pool is going to pull back. And I have to wonder does he just pull the trigger on going towards Imperial here? He's got more farm clusters coming in, the long walls are going in. There's a decent number of Mount Samurai, but you've got a decent number of Spearmen to defend, and it seems it is indeed going to be a trigger pull for the Imperial. I wouldn't mind a keep here as well. Like, a keep drop in this area is really strong. Just gives you this kind of forward line, right? It gives you, like, a Magano line effect. And here we go, folks. Wingard Pass now on the way. All right, what do you think, guys? Footman or Raiders? It's, it's Raiders. It's always Raiders. The Raider build is insane with this Sif. Um, there's a chance he'd consider going for Rangers, considering his opponent's army is mass range now, and Rangers beat both of these units. But you still got to contest the Mount Samurai, and if you go for the Raiders, you can just spread out across the map, attack these gold veins, right? Just keep raid, 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 raid. Live up to the name. David Kim, the real David Kim, is the reason I quit SC2. That's interesting, Wicked Skies. If you queue at the right time in the day, this David Kim could be the reason you quit AoE for. Oh my god, he's actually... What? <laughs> he's actually going for the footman. Okay, I did not expect that. I felt like that was the one I would expect the least of. There is a Wingard Raider prepped after this, though. Yeah, it, it doesn't make much sense when you're up against this many Onimusha. The Rangers at least do. Um, the Raiders, they're going to have a, a mixed bag here, right? Like You are going to have some horsemen deal with Onimusha. Recon breaks the wall, but it's pushed back immediately. He needs to get some damage done here. He needs to give punishment. Right now, Recon is behind by 30 villagers. And now an entire age. Footmen are going to come out. So just bolstering his troops, right? I think he's trying to tick every box. And also the crafty bugger. Puppy Paw actually is prepping hand cannons this early on in an age up. That's not something you see very often. Quite frequently, that's led to the death of a player. Remember how often we see Roost rush Imperial and just die due to Streltsy production time? This is very risky what he's doing. The Springwood Outpost, the White Tower might give him enough breathing room to get away with it, especially with the fact that Recon is now diving 
in between all these static defenses. We got Raiders come out. They force the clash. Hand cannoneers have now arrived. And this is a problem. Recon. I don't think his army's big enough for this. Half of them own Amusha, which means they are literal glass cannons. <laughs> I think this is over. Recon. He's barely got any samurai left to raid frequently with. And on top of that, the Yumi are inflating the numbers disingenuously, right? Half of his army, over half of it is a crap tier unit, a trash tier unit. You win Zerg and you're about to be outnumbered. Doesn't get much worse than this. I think Recon, the awkward thing in this game was that choice to go Mount Samurai and then not follow up Onomusha. I think you can get away with leaving it until the second year of Shiro. Personally, I prefer the first, but that detail alone gave control of this game and control of the mid-map over to Puppy Paw in a way that Recon didn't really recover from. He needed that. He needed that initial surge to get him into the base and start raiding before Puppy Paw got comfortable with his eco lead. But now that we're here, now that it's over 40 villages, I think it's undeniable that this game is done. Recon, if he tries to save for an age up now, he dies. If he tries to all in in Castle Age, he dies. Poppy Poor at this point really can do no wrong other than accidentally disconnecting his PC. Poppy Poor. Now he'll just pump more Wingard Raiders. <laughs> you see that, right? <laughs> He's queued up three groups of Wingard Raiders. If you guys are wondering whether this is worth it, let that be your answer. Yes, you don't get a huge discount, right? You're getting uh, free horsemen and free knights, which equates to, uh, I believe it's 1,080 resources. So you're still paying 850. It's nowhere near the type of discount you get out of the Wingard army. However, the advantage is how quickly you get it. 25 second wait is it. Even the White Tower can't compete with that. White Tower will get you a, a horseman out in 11 seconds, right? What about the rest of that? And remember, like, typically uh, one night will take that long. It takes uh, 35 seconds out of a standard stable play. So that's why you go Wingard Radius. It's not about the discount. There's a slight discount which makes it worth it. It's about this Zerg factor that the English get. Recon has now commenced the wall. So it looks like he's going to try to catch up and do Imperial. He has gone for a second TC. If Recon somehow gets back into this game, it's a miracle. Like, he's a mile behind at this stage. And I don't really feel like the Japanese are going to have a, a fun time even if they reach Imperial. If you get hyper late game Imperial, theoretically, you could be favored with your Samurai versus Men at Arms. But the problem I'm seeing is by the time you're going to be aged up, Puppy Paw is going to be on Mass Hand Cannoneers. And Mass Hand Cannoneers is low-key insane for the English. The attack speed aura just makes them one of the best in the game. Walls are also being broken through because guess what? You went for wooden walls instead of stone walls. <laughs> That's the other problem, isn't it? I, I realistically can't see a world in which Recon can get to Imperial Age. Look at where his gold's located. It's all on the right side. You can just raid this up and down. The second wave's coming in as well. So yeah, we had to clear up the initial raid is sure. But what do you do about the next? And the next? And the next? Because the irony, actually, of the English in this matchup, he's playing against a Sith that traditionally plays Zerg, right? That's all the Japanese love to do. Number, number, number. It's a numbers game. You're being out Zerged. <laughs> it may take Imperial Age, but once the English get there, the Zerg factor is absurd. Oh, it's absurd. I I'm sorry, that was a terrible joke. Get in the fight. Here we go. Clash comes in. And once again, Recon's numbers lie. Half of that army is worthless. It's Yumi. They're doing nothing here. There's no way he's going to be able to hold this. I think Poppy Paul, you know, him and Wow were the first ones to start turfing out this new build. They found a really optimal way to play Abbey of Kings into Mass Cavalry. And I am worried for the competitive scene because... Last time we saw English dominate, dunk. It was a roll of the eyes, English OP, and a million nerfs had to come in. Now they return with this old school knight combo that looks 10 times stronger than it ever was in the past.